Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306 and I want to talk about this little tiny chip here that was kindly sent by IC Station. And if you guys are so interested, um, this is actually product number uh, 756 star 1. And um, you can see the details here, it's a TTP223. And this is actually the, the chip that I'm using in my RGB backlit Game Boy. You can see how small it is and it's just a matter of um, wiring it up and then any surface that this uh, front top touch uh, you know part of the board touches also becomes touch sensitive so it'll work through plastics metals actually really cool module so let's uh, take a look at the details here and um, yeah you can see it's a capacitive touch sensor so this implements everything that's complicated and it just gives you a digital output on the IO pin right here and so you can see there's a kind of a user settable feature here that's really cool uh, between pads A and B we'll go down below and see later um, exactly what those do there's an onboard LED that lights up when you touch um, the sensor so it's actually very useful for debugging if you just hook up uh, power and ground to the, the chip it'll give you visual indication if it's working or not so you can see here that's originally a dollar which is that's absolutely nothing. It's dirt cheap. And it's actually on sale for 79 cents. So, you know, for the next three days, if you guys want to stock up on these, these are very cheap and very useful, especially if you're into like programming Arduinos and stuff. You can throw touch sensors into just about anything, add them in very easily. This will interface with ju just digital inputs. So essentially you can make anything that can read like a switch can read this, which is absolutely awesome. Power, it has a pretty wide range input, so 2.5 volts to 5.5. So the Game Boy that I'm using it with is running at 5 volts, but a lot of like um, Raspberry Pi stuff runs off 3.3 volts, so this will work with either, which is great. You don't need a separate level shifter or regulator or anything else. You can just wire the chip directly. And uh, the great thing is there's two pads that I'd mentioned, um, the A and B pads here. Uh, they actually correspond to uh, programming um, pads that are brought out that you can just blob some solder on and it'll change the setting. So originally um, there are no shorts. This comes just with a um, little bit of solder on the pads but nothing connecting them. So if um, they're both zero essentially, no short, then that means the initial state is um, where what they call no lock, so it's momentary. When you touch the sensor, it goes high, so high TTL level output. When you remove your finger from the sensor, it, it goes back to low. So this is what I use for my uh, Game Boy RGB uh, sensor. This is a mode that I use. If you, set, uh, if you put a short across pads B, but not A, so if I blob a little bit of solder here, it changes to this mode where um, it's self-lock, what they call. A uh, more appropriate title for this would be toggle. So essentially when you touch it, 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 it toggles so it goes on and then it goes off. Likewise, um, if you uh, have solder links across both A and B, it'll uh, also toggle, I'm, I'm guessing. I haven't actually tested this out. We can do that in a second. Um, but the output will just be inverted. Uh, so additionally, if you have a solder blob across A but not B, then it'll um, it'll be the opposite. It'll um, when you press the touch the switch, the output goes low, and when you release the switch, it goes back high and it stays there. So using these are pretty much all the possible states that you would ever really need from a switch like this. If you're in implementing this with um, some sort of digital controller like an Arduino or whatever, it's good enough just to leave it stock so no solder blobs and it'll work as is. If you want to use this for something that doesn't have a controller but you need like an on-off switch that stays on or stays off after you touch it, then you want to uh, set it in either the 0-1 mode or the 1-1 mode. Uh, in order to enable the self-lock functionality, basically. Now let's uh, go to the breadboard and actually wire this up and see exactly how it works. Okay, so here we are on the breadboard. Just ignore this um, this SOIC to diff adapter here. I'm, I'm wiring something else. Okay, so just a little bit of a close-up here. You can see just how small this chip actually is. Here's my thumb. 
my thumbnail, and here's the chip, so about the same size. <laughs> I soldered these headers. They don't come with it, but I soldered them in to make it easy to plug it into a breadboard. You can see the top surface has a, a little symbol for on the silk screen for where you're supposed to touch it. So to mount this, you just essentially tape it to something or glue it, and that works just fine. Uh, you can see in my uh, Game Boy... Um, I actually have the same sensor. I just uh, used some double stick tape and stuck it on there. So it's perfectly satisfactory using that. On the other side, you can see the chip itself, a capacitor, and then a resistor and an LED for the, uh, the output detection of when you're touching it or not. And the chip's a tiny little six pin uh, uh, SOT 23. Anyway, uh, you can see just how small this is. So let's give this a little bit of a try. First test that we're going to do, um, I have a USB power bank here, and this will be good enough for testing. So let's just shove some wires in here, hopefully, um, and just hook it up to 5 volts straight and see what happens. And just hit power on, and you can see nothing lights up, nothing happens. Anyway, you can see it as soon as I touch the top of the board, you can see I'm not touching the pins or anything, I'm just touching the uninsulated area. And it's so sensitive, in fact, that you don't even have to touch it. You just get near it, and it sets it off. So it's kind of ideal. You can get a little piece of, like, some plastic or mount it on paper, cardboard, whatever, and it'll actually work through solid materials, which is really cool. So, uh... One other thing that we can do is I can show you just how easy it is to interface to an electronic uh, anything else. <laughs> a microprocessor, LEDs, you can make a light switch, whatever you want. Okay, so now we just have everything input into that. So we have it in circuit, so I can get actually pretty close, but not even touching, and it goes off. So this is actually pretty cool. You can see that I'm able to control any external load. I can hook a transistor and then hook a high power LED and make a lamp or do whatever I want. But right now this isn't that useful uh, just in terms of the fact that um, I have to press and hold it to keep the light on obviously. So let's uh, try doing um, some solder links or something. Anyway, so what we can end up doing is plugging this back in. This janky breadboard. There we go. Power is still inserted, and what I'm going to take is a piece of wire. So what I'm going to end up doing is just using the lead of this resistor just as a wire. So we're going to hook that up to ground, which I believe was this last wire here. So if we touch and hold one of these, uh, we can change the behavior. So one of these wires, I haven't marked it. One is A, one is B. I, I'm not sure which one right now. but uh, if we touch and hold and power it up, you can see, okay, this is B then, um, the wire that I'm currently touching. You can see that uh, when you power it up, it reads these values and then it sets it. So right now, without anything touching, it's when you touch it, it's on. When you release it, it's off. If I touch this wire, turn it on, I can release that. Now it's opposite. Now it's on when I'm not touching it and it's off when I am. Now let's touch the other wire, which should be A, I believe. You can see it toggles, exactly like I said. So now you can see, if you want to use this as a lamp, you would um, have A uh, grounded, and then when I touch it, it turns on, it stays on, I can use it as a, a light source. When I'm done, I can just touch it again, it goes off. It's that easy, you just put a little piece of wire and short the pads underneath the chip uh, to get that functionality. Um, so this is actually pretty cool. It's, um, you know, modifiable easily and whatnot. And it's, I could see this being used for a lot of different things that uh, you could use, um, you know, a, a make, you know, like a momentary switch, but having a touch switch, maybe if you want to make something waterproof, you don't necessarily want to have uh, switches that poke out. Uh, you just want to have a flat surface and this taped underneath it, in which case a uh, touch sensor would be awesome. It's also kind of futuristic and pretty neat. Uh, I could imagine you could 3D print a case and just have like raised 
icons for what the buttons represent and you just touch those icons and it toggles or does whatever the functionality is so yeah I gotta say for like a dollar this is very impressive um, with free shipping too so you can order like you know a lot of these just to keep in the parts drawer um, for future projects so definitely if you guys are interested in this um, I would definitely advise um, I'll have links down below and um, also you can use a, cup a coupon code that I have down below that IC station uh, graciously had given me um, so that you can get a uh, little bit off your order if you want to order a number of these you can get some savings on that too so anyway um, I'd like to thank you guys for watching I rambled on for long enough and I'll see you guys later bye